having me. Uh, yeah, today we're going to talk about speech, feeding, and sleep improvements in young children after tongue tie release. A few disclosures. I am the owner of the Alabama Tongue Tie Center and Shelby Pediatric Dentistry in Pelham, that's just south of Birmingham, Alabama. I did author the book Tongue Tie uh, with a team of specialists and received royalties from the sale, although we are donating all the royalties to charity. Also, have an advanced live patient course at our office, but we also have an infect fee to charity. And we have no interest in dental or laser companies and haven't received any money for this talk. So. Uh, talking about play, we do actually have a playground at our office. Oh, um, yeah. playground. Yeah. Um, and here's our family. So my Aww. wife Tara is a nurse practitioner. Hannah and Noel, that's how I got into this whole mess with tongue ties. Uh, our lactation consultant told us they had a tie. I said, what is that? I was already a pediatric dentist basically, had like two weeks left. And then uh, Molly's our latest addition. She's now eight months old. Um, she had a tongue tie at birth as well. It was to the tip. Um, after a, my wife was 42 and a half weeks pregnant uh, with Molly VBAC attempt, we, we got the VBAC barely, um, but four hours of pushing. After all that, I waited five minutes to tell her she had a tongue tie. It's her first cry I saw this to the tip. Um, so I waited. I was like, oh my gosh, that's to the tip. Okay. <laughs> it was an appropriate story right then. So I waited for the tip. And the joke is then, so we went to the um, office and released it. On um, day two, on um, the way home from the hospital, she gained a pound the first week, oh. a pound the second week, a pound the third week, a pound the fourth week, fifth week, sixth week, and seventh week. A pound every week. Wow. And she now weighs 24 pounds at eight months old and 18 month clothing, exclusively breastfed, uh, never had a rough performance or anything like that. Um, so, anyway, uh, that's the girls. Uh, here's the fourth baby, uh, the <laughs> type book. Uh, it took a year long process. Um, if you don't have a copy, it's, it's on Amazon. Um, it's been a bestseller in several categories like parenting. Um, it's currently a bestseller in audiology and speech pathology. Um, so thank you for your support. Today. Um, we're really trying to spread awareness of it, and uh, it all came about because parents were asking us, like, how is my doctor, how have I never heard about this before? I said, that's ridiculous. There should be um, some good kind of uh, just resource on this. So we got together the team, and, um, and it turned out to work. So anyway, this is a labor of love. All right, so uh, like all good, uh, we'll start with the story. Um, so this one uh, was a two and a half year old little girl, uh, we'll just call her Sarah. And Sarah came in and um, as, as a baby, she had lots of problems. Uh, she had reflux, uh, milk trolling out of her mouth, click finger smacking noises. She refused to nurse. She actually had a uh, tube fed uh, for the first eight weeks of life because they were worried about aspiration. Um, she had a swallow study, she passed it eight weeks and Sarah would give her a bottle. But, uh, she's continued to have issues. Uh, so this is our, our form. You'll see this throughout the lecture. Just has all the domains on one slot, on one page to, to assess them when they come in. Um, lots of speech issues, feeding issues, sleep issues, and other. So speech issues for her. She's real frustrated with communication. Her parents understood about 70% of what she said. She had trouble getting words out, trouble with certain sounds, S's and L's. Uh, speech delay. Uh, she was in speech therapy for a few months and baby talk. Uh, feeding wasn't much better. She was a slow eater, grazed on foods throughout the day, packed food into her chipmunk, um, ch choking or gagging on food, uh, real picky eating. Uh, this time it was some soft veggies, applesauce, ice cream, yogurt. Often it's meat and mashed potatoes. Those are the two most common we see with tongue tie. Um, meat and mashed potatoes. Um, but she had uh, swallowing issues, she'll gag and vomit all the time. They did vital stem therapy for her swallow. Um, sleep issues, again, not much better. She kicked and flailed around at night, a little restless sleeper. Uh, woke up easily or often, grinds teeth while sleeping, just a mouth open, snores, mom said awful, and always. Uh, two and a half years old. Uh, very strong gag reflex, just randomly she'll gag during the day. Um, ear tubes, reflux, and constipation. So I was thinking, man, like with all those issues, most of those related to ties, um, we're probably gonna get to the tip, Tommy Ty will make sure you look in there and see what happened. Looked in there and that's what we saw. It's like, lift tie and like virtually nothing there. What's interesting though is this would be a posterior tie, uh, meaning that the fascia underneath is tighter than normal. So the connective tissue or fascia underneath is tighter. And how do we know? Well, we released it. That took about 10 seconds in the office. No sedation, no general anesthesia, no papoose board appearance in there holding hands. We have a TV in the ceiling um, and just topical. Um, and so all that 10 seconds with a CO2 laser, uh, dial laser took about a minute, um, but we use a CO2 laser. Uh, we did not release the lip tie. Uh, it was not needed in this case. We do not laser everyone that walks in. We don't laser every freedom. Um, but ease, ease of brushing there. She did have a little bit of plaque on the teeth, um, but there's no fighting on brushing. Um, interestingly, we do hear a lot of reports of after releasing the lip tie, they can nasally breathe better. Um, but we felt in this case it was not needed. 
one didn't want to anyway, and the results come from the tongue most of the time, not the lip. So a week later, we get them back, and here's what it proved. So in this form, everything is good. So in one week, um, had easier to speak, new words, less baby talk, less kicking and moving around at night, sleeping deeper, less grinding teeth while sleeping, less snoring while sleeping the first night, um, eating was easier to swallow, finishing meals better, less packing foods in your cheek, less choking or gagging, and less spitting out food. The crazy thing is this is not like an abnormal case. This is a pretty standard case at our office. Um, honestly, we, we get a lot of these kids in from all over, and uh, what's interesting, again, is like the appearance, there's nothing there. So symptoms and function over appearance every day. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, we're talking about speech, speech, and sleep improvement. So how do we check these kids? Uh, we use a knee-to-knee -knee lap board from a specialized care company. Um, we check babies like this. You see the cute baby there. Um, and this is a, another girl um, that came over to us. And uh, if they're like two years old or something like that, a lot of people are like, oh, don't treat them, just wait on it. But like we've seen before, like brain development, 80% complete by age three. By age five, 90% the size of an adult brain. And so a lot of these kids, we, we can't wait on them. So we'll, you know, certainly if therapy dictates something like that, we'll wait. But most of them are coming to us for diagnosable problems. Um, we're going to go ahead and treat it uh, if there's an indication for treatment. Sometimes we have to use a mouth prop or mouth gag in order to um, prevent from losing a finger. Uh, I got bit about three times on Thursday. Um, but that, that's pretty routine. Not bad, but you know, I just lost a finger one time. So. <laughs> anyway, uh, as, but as a pediatric dentist, we do way worse. And you know, can, can assess this for like one filling. And it has no, virtually no bearing on the child. Is this my water? Yeah. Yes, that's you. Sorry. And so we'll talk about. Uh, but yeah, if, you, if you're not checking them properly, you won't see it. So checking them in the mother's arms or in the car seat for a baby or if they're just um, like in the hallway, that's not the best way to test. And you really got to get a finger on there and do it. Uh, I know I was good in teletherapy. And if they were the, if there's no sort of resources in our state, we have one mild functional therapist in the whole state. Oh. She's at our office. So, oh, um, yes, uh, she's a speech in Alabama. Yeah. She's a speech pathologist. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's on the book, uh, Lauren Beans is her name. <clears throat> but she has a waiting list, so anyway, uh, so we do the best we can with what you have. So if you're in California, there's like a thousand malfunctional therapists, I'm not sure you probably tell us the number, Joy, how many malfunctional therapists in California? Uh, a lot. Uh, it just depends on where you are. <clears throat> but So for child assessment, then symptoms and function are way more important than appearance. So uh, who do you think has the worst speech of all these? It's kind of a trick question. This one was nonverbal. He's autistic, 10 years old, nonverbal. He also had speech, uh, PD problems, and sleep issues. This one had perfect articulation, although not perfect placement, but perfect articulation. Like, if you talk to her, you cannot tell she's a tie. It's not obvious at all. But had neck tension, neck pain, um, sleep issues. So for other reasons, we did that one. But yeah, that's, that's obvious. So what's interesting is like some of these other ones on like a hygiene visit for like a dental office or a well child check or if you're a pediatrician, um, you wouldn't even think twice about these kids. They can stick their tongue out fine. Uh, they're, they're fine, you know. Um, they will survive. Uh, this one will survive, I mean, uh, but you want them to thrive and, and do well. So uh, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, long story short, this one um, ended up coming back the next week talking afterwards, a nonverbal autistic kid. And so a lot of these kids with autism, like we talked about, with speech issues, feeding issues, and sleep issues, there's a lot of overlap there with autism or with Down syndrome or pick whatever you want to pick. Um, but they can have a tongue tie and autism. Uh, and a lot of these kids, like, I would not even have called that a tie unless they come to see us for that reason. I would you know, have thought twice about that. So uh, we're now releasing these ones and seeing crazy results in autistic kids. Uh, where like some of the high functioning <coughs> autistic kids, a lot of their symptoms are disappearing uh, to where they're not, maybe it wasn't an autism diagnosis in the first place. The same with ADHD. New study came out last year 93% of kids with ADHD had sleep troubles of some kind. Um, so, uh, yeah, maybe she is a made of diagnosis. Oh. Uh, so, for uh, here's some nice slip ties there. There's a dog leg on this one. Uh, obviously, it carries there, dental cavities. Um, and so, you see, when we release these, the gap closes up almost always. Uh, if done properly, if you get all the tissue between here, if you snip it with scissors right there, you won't get any gap closure. You have to remove the restriction between the teeth. When you do that, it's easier to brush their teeth, less risk of cavities. Um, so that's the main reason we do the lip tie. Uh, and infants, obviously, it's the main reason for breastfeeding. Uh, we don't do an infant for future benefits with speech or feeding or sleep, um, but we do see like, 
we, fit, we hypothesize, I mean, there's been studies on it, Web, um, uh, Wallace 2014, that the kids that had their tongue tied treated in infancy had better speech outcomes at age three. So, and then again, uh, elevation is more important than protrusion, excuse me. So, um, if you just stem and stick your tongue out, that's, that's not the best test. Um, that's uh, sticking your tongue out, it's good for uh, ice cream cones, um, for French kissing, um, making fun of your friend, but uh, for speech, feeding, and sleep, you need elevation. That's the key. So, here's the form we use. I'll zoom in here a little bit. So um, what we look at is, again, the main domains of speech, feeding, and sleep. We look at what issues it has a baby. Um, and all of our forms are on our website. If you like, it's a Word document. You can modify it. It's tongue-tie-al.com. I have it at the end, too. Uh, some of the professionals have. Um, but it's all forms we use. Uh, so for speech, and it's also in the back of the book. Uh, but frustration with communication. They have trouble understanding why parents are outsiders. Uh, trouble speaking fast, getting words out. Trouble with sounds is typically your R, L, S. Talk about in a second. Um, speech delay, uh, which a lot of people would say is not related to tongue tie. Um, we have some exciting data coming out that um, it is linked, uh, is what we see. Uh, stuttering, speech is hard to understand long sentences. Speech therapy for whatever time, mumbling, speaking softly, and baby talk. Uh, for feeding, frustration with eating, trouble transition to solid, slow eater, uh, grazing on food throughout the day, having food in their cheeks that get shut them off, picking with certain textures, choking or gagging on food, and spitting out food. What we see. Uh, sleep issues, weird positions, restless sleeping, wakes up easily or often, wetting the bed because they're not getting a good deep sleep. Uh, wakes up tired, not refreshed, grinds teeth, sleeps with mouth open, snores while sleeping, and gasps for air. Obviously, there's sleep apnea a question. And then um, the baby issues, y'all probably know those, uh, but it's painful nursing, shallow lash, poor weight gain, trouble with the bottle, reflux, uh, aerophasia, induced reflux is what it is. They're swallowing air. Uh, can't hold a pacifier, milk drooling out of the mouth, poor supply, they need a nipple shield, the clicking or snacking noise you often hear, and they're breaking their seal. Finally, uh, the other uh, basket here is neck or shoulder pain, TMJ pain, headaches and migraines, strong gag reflux, uh, mouth breathing, tonsils or edema removed previously, ear tubes previously, uh, reflux as an adult or as a child, hyperactivity, inattention, and constipation. Is it really constipation, like related to tongue ties? Um, we'll talk about that in a second. So uh, for these kids that we're not sure about, um, like for the dental hygiene visit, or just like your regular kids, like how are you gonna check them if you're a speech pathologist, or um, and again, a lot of kids, it's, for speech therapy, it's a self-selecting group. So probably a high percentage of them have some kind of a tongue restriction, um, whether it's visible or not. Um, it could be a symptomatic tongue restriction, uh, or a posterior tie. I prefer the term symptomatic. They basically have symptoms and the tongue restricted or a non-compensating tongue restriction. They're having trouble compensating from that. But for this tool, uh, something quick and easy to implement <coughs> combines the symptoms, function, and parent desires. Uh, we want to have it useful and reliably predict related issues, and it should prevent treating if there's no issues. So uh, one part of it uh, is we use the TRMR, uh, the Tongue Range of Motion Ratio, with Yun and Zagi. You all probably heard about this. They're perfecting it currently, adding some more subcategories, which I think uh, grade two. But basically the way it works is you just have the child open or the adult open. It's the best quick and dirty test. If you're on the streets of Nashville and someone asks you, hey, do I have a tongue tie? Uh, you can quickly have them open their mouth, lift the tongue up. It should elevate close to the palate or to the palate um, behind the incisors from the spot. Um, but if it only lifts a quarter of the way or less, that's a grade four. Less than halfway, it's a grade three. 50 to 80% is a grade two. And then over 80% is a grade one. But that's not exactly best thing because we have some people in the grade two that have all the symptoms or the one earlier is a grade one with tons of symptoms um, and so the symptoms are more important than the appearance so we don't just release on appearance alone unless it's a grade four is the tip and the parents don't realize all the symptoms involved so that's the only exception but elevation is the key and sticking out the tongue is the worst test to determine the presence of a tongue tie so don't do that um, here's our tongue restriction questionnaire. So basically, we took the greatest hits of the um, 50 question one, and we put it on here. It's about 12, 15 questions. Um, it's also on our, uh, if you download the slide, download the forms, you have it on there. Um, but uh, basically, it's yeah, frustration with communication, trouble with speech sounds, speech delay, slow eating, picky eating, choking or gagging. So we have some speech things, some eating things, some sleeping things, and then a few uh, others on there. And then we also put something in there about the impact of quality of life, because some of these things, like picky eating, like it may or may not, sometimes it could be a huge issue where the parents cannot go out to eat, um, or it could be a real minor issue. Oh yeah, I just don't like vegetables. And so you have to really kind of read between the lines and be a good historian to see 
if it's a, a normal thing, a normal part of development, like not many two-year-olds can say R, you know, that's, that's not gonna be a tongue tie because they can't say R to. Um, but if they're 10, <laughs> that's a different story. So you have to look at all the things. And then we just have them uh, lift up their tongue and assess here. And then this just says referral recommended. So I'm saying they have a tongue tie, you're not saying, let's just say, hey, this needs to be checked out more. So this is what we do in our dental office. And then we'll refer them over to the tongue tie center that we have, uh, which is the next door to your office, basically. So uh, we'll talk about speech, feeding, and sleep here a little bit. You've probably heard a lot about this already, but um, for speech issues, uh, trouble with alveolar sounds, alveolar sounds, interdental, and palatal alveolar sounds. Um, speech delay, so uh, oh, again, those uh, alveolars would be S, Z, T, E, L, and R. Alveolars would be G, K, and N, N, uh, or so E, like sing. I think um, palatal alveolars, sh, S, H, and T, H. Um, speech delay, uh, again, it's seen clinically, but it has not been reported in the literature before. So the people that say, oh, tone tie is not related to speech delay, they don't have a single article to back that up. It, it's never been studied, good or bad. Um, so it's interesting. Uh, certain people that are outspoken with loud voices say there's no, anyway. Uh, trouble speaking clearly or quickly, stuttering. I have a great video of this lady who's a mom, uh, brought her baby to us. The worst stutter I've ever seen on a secondary feature to like ticks and stuff. And, um, we don't have time today, I should show you, but it, it was impressive. Uh, immediately after releasing it, she stopped stuttering. Yeah, that's crazy. I've, I've showed it at like IATP or ICAP or something. Um, if you have time, if you want to see, I'll show it. But anyway, um, shy, interpersonal, and psychological issues. So like, bullying, like it's it's more than just the small things. Like you said, the suicide, um, suicide ideation. Like we had one uh, grandma came in and said, oh yeah, I had like a tongue tie kid in my class growing up. And he was always made fun of. They told him to go up to the board and write, and they called on him to basically make fun of him. The teachers did. They were real mean. It was back like in the 30s or 40s. And um, the child ended up committing suicide in his teens. And they think it was in large part because of a tongue tie, because he was made fun of so bad, bullying. Um, so, uh, and finally, it's in the Bible, Mark 7:35. His ears were opened. The string of his tongue was released. That's literally what it says. And he spoke plainly. Well, I, it's right there. It's the word of God. Uh, so, feeding and tongue ties. Uh, so, feeding obviously is a very complex process, like speech. Um, eight tongue muscles, uh, six cranial nerves directly involved in chewing and swallowing. Um, again, inappropriate behaviors we've talked about already, but gagging, packing food in the cheeks, expelling, spitting out food, vomiting, swallowing whole, refusing, uh, poor weight gain. So, these kids would be like, oh, I can take three bites and say they're full. It's not they're full, it's so much effort to eat, they just I'm, I'm bored of eating. Then they get distracted. It's like a chicken and the egg thing. Parents say, oh, it just gets distracted. That's why he eats slowly. It's like, or he's having difficulty swallowing, and, or it's dangerous for him to swallow. He's worried about it, so he's packing packs in his cheek and leaves it there for safekeeping. Or to spit it out and give it back to you. Um, so that's what we see a lot. But, uh, poor lip closure, extended meal times, takes forever for them to eat. They say they can't eat out. Um, so significant quality of life issues uh, to the parents and the family, and obviously the child. And then the, the pouches at age five, you know, like they can't consume an age appropriate diet. So this is our article from last year. Um, you can download it, um, but uh, it's on PubMed. Uh, speech and feeding improvements in children after post-year tongue tie release. Uh, Lauren and I put this out there. Um, but basically it's the first article linking feeding to tongue ties. Before this, there was not a single article we could find uh, linking solid feeding to tongue ties. So breastfeeding, ball feeding, there's articles on that. But solid feeding in children, there's nothing. And what's a step further is these are all posterior tongue ties, like not obvious. You would not think this child was tongue tied if you met them on the street or this one, but they all had speech, feeding, and sleep improvements. So all three, and there's five kids. Um, yeah, I'm just like, how, how do you Yes, it's a great question. So like in the earlier slide, we showed like the different levels. That's like anterior view to the tip. It's, it's the anterior is actually in front of the glands or not, but it's not. It's a really like not a great distinction. So basically, if it's obvious, you can see it. It's anterior. If it's more hidden or submucosal, we have to elevate the tongue to see the tie. And it's not even a string too. We say a string in the book, but I know it's called out for that in an article. But basically, it's a webbing of fascia that's pulled up and real tight like this. And so when you release with the laser, you can see it beautifully like, perfectly. Like, it, it's just a ton of spider webby fascia, and you see the pictures too. Uh, but that's what makes it up. And so it just sits like this. When you pull up on it, it comes up like a string. But some of them are in a string constantly. So Kahiri would say it's like a sailboat. is the anterior tie. Uh, the, so the sail is the anterior part. The mast is the posterior part. And so all anterior ties have a posterior component. I Meaning they all have a thick band. So if they just clip the front of that, they cut the sail, 
it's not going to be effective. You're not going to get the results we get because you're not getting that nice diamond shape afterward. You're just basically cutting halfway, which will help some. It probably helps half the time if you cut halfway. So that's what's confounded a lot of the research is because people think they got the whole thing, but only got half of it. So like if you did a study on tonsillectomy and you took out one tonsil, but you thought you got both, that would be confusing and that you would not get the same results as someone who took out both tonsils. So anyway, but the diamonds, you can see the fascia there actually. Um, you can see right here, it makes some slides harder. Show up at the end, that's, um, I'll skip that for time. Uh, but it's an order. So suppose we just leave it, what happens? Um, so for babies that have ties that are untreated, uh, or younger kids untreated, uh, and speech delay, they're really shy, frustrated, they're embarrassed, um, and bullying. And again, with airway issues, the bullying it could be either way. It could be the kid with the tongue tie, could be the bully themselves with aggressive behavior, or they could be bullied because of the poor speech, um, messy eating, um, funny eating with their mouth open, that kind of thing. Uh, airway issues, also of mouth breathing, poor oxygenation, snoring, we talked about this all day yesterday. Um, poor sleep quality leads to poor behavior, ADHD. When I don't sleep well, I have poor behavior and I get distracted easily. Um, teeth grinding, and again, brain development happens during that deep sleep. Trouble swallowing, uh, slow, picky eating, small appetite, poor growth and development. A lot of these kids are so thin, like, like a twig, because um, again, they just don't have a good appetite. Um, and because it's difficult or more effort to swallow. Uh, poor dental development, so high arch palate, um, elongated soft palate, mild immune study, um, tongue force, <coughs> private teeth. So a lot of that happens in response to the tongue having a low posture. And that could just be the posture, but often it's held down by something in, in utero, they come out with a high arch palate. Um, so why do they have a high arch palate? And often, in many cases, it's the tongue. Not every case, but many cases. Um, GI symptoms, reflux, and constipation. Again, constipation, really? So here's a case for it. Um, this kid was autistic. Uh, I think he was like eight or nine years old. This is this past summer. Um, and they came in, and he had lots of speech issues, so he was nonverbal. Um, a couple of feeding issues. And like I said, many, most patients that come to us have at least 15 check marks, probably. Like there's lots of things going on. Um, if they had one or two, we're not going to just do it. Um, but he wakes up easily or often, wets the bed, wakes up tired, not refreshed, we won't try new foods, we'll have like sensory issues, eating, um, speech issues. Um, again, he's, he's nonverbal. He's on Vyvanse for ADHD. Um, and constipation at the bottom. He had all these other issues, so we had lots to talk about. Uh, we didn't even talk about the constipation. I didn't give it a second, second thought. Um, and here's the picture. So again, this kid right here, it's not obvious. Like if you came into your office, it, it would just look like every other kid. It's, it's a medium appearance tongue tie. So I'd say this is still close to your tongue tie. I'm pulling back on it to show you the freedom here. Um, and afterward, that's the release. Uh, we've not put him to sleep. We'll do autistic 10 year olds in the office. Um, no sedation, no nitrous, nothing like that. Um, but that took about maybe 20 seconds or so to do that. Um, again, it's about as traumatic as a flu shot. So like I would not put a kid to sleep for a flu shot. So, um, but came back a week later, and here's what happened. So he didn't talk. I was like, oh man, it's like it's not always like you know you don't always get the and then start talking afterwards. There's like, more that goes into it, but it is fun when they do come back talking. Um, but it's easier for him to eat, less frustration with eating, less picky. Um, he's sleeping through the night in his own bed now instead of mom and dad's bed. So for you those of your parents that know that's um, that's a big deal for them. Um, let's kick him moving around at night, sleeping deeper, waking up less tired. And because he had better quality sleep, the camp called and asked, did you change his meds? He's doing so much better. Dad said he had better behavior, less hyperactivity, and then less constipation. He said much less. He was only having a BM every eight days. Now he goes twice a day. What? Yes. So there's three reasons probably for that. One is the vagus nerve, like you talked about before. Uh, rest and digest. Uh, number two is probably it's easier to chew, so easier to lateralize bolus, easier to chew, so if it doesn't start the journey right, it won't end the journey right. Uh, number three, um, most likely because the swallow, the wave from the swallow is what peristaltic wave goes all the way down the system, so think in, improved GI motility uh, from that. So, um, But anyway, that's yeah, crazy. It's not just one kid. So here's another uh, 11 and a half year old. Um, so they came in um, she had a lot of sleep issues, perfect speech, uh, good feeding, but she had like neck tension, which you often see in like adults. The kids are not that in tune with their body most of the time to know that they have like a tight neck because that's just their existence. They don't know it could be any different. Um, but she did have like, she went to the chiropractor a lot and um, neck or shoulder pain, uh, tonsils, adenoids out, hyperactivity. Uh, she was borderline ADHD. 
um, constipation. She said she's tried everything. It's bad. That's what they said. But she tried everything. Miralax twice a day. She's a GI doctor. Said her bowels are pushing up her kidney and bladder. She's so constipated. It's a huge problem. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so let's see what happened. So looked in there again, like, oh, man, nothing there. So are we going to treat them? Well, they have all the symptoms. Mom wants to proceed. We always set low expectations, like, it might work. You know, and we, we think it'll work. We, I, don't, I don't do it unless I think it's going to work, but um, we don't, like, guarantee it, obviously. They told us we had a 0% chance of having twins. We have twins. So we never <laughs> said uh, 100 or 0% chance. But again, pulling back on the fascia, you can see it now. Here's the nice picture of the fascia. You can see that's what inside looks like. So we did not remove any of the genioglossus muscle. muscle. Um, we'll remove sometimes in adults, like Zagi does, um, but we do not on, on kids normally. It increases the pain significantly. Um, several pain points, you know, like three or four points higher. Um, here's the nerve, too. There's the lingual nerve on her right, and there's the lingual nerve on her left. Do not hit that. That would be bad. So stay away from that. Um, but. And you see like the kind of glossy, like spider webby stuff over, that's the fascia. That's an up close view of the fascia. But that's what it looks like from far away. So you think your constipation got better? Yes. Yes. So they were like, this would be a miracle if it gets better. Four check marks look for less constipation. <laughs> Strangely, yes. She's real funny, like 11 and a half year old. Um, she says that she now goes two or three times a day. She's very elated. She has less tummy problems. I mean, it's a significant okay. quality of life for her. Um, yes, praise the Lord. It was amazing. Uh, but like, you know, before it was like, she was lucky if she went one time, maybe. Um, most of the time it was like every other day, every three days. Um, sleeping better, lots of sleeping improvements. And then it's funny because like, mom let her do this bottom part. Mom said probably yes. Child, child said, I don't think so. Said it hurts. She wrote that in there. Um, anyway, but she was glad for the improvements. So, um, so here's our study. Uh, it's a prospective cohort study. We had 37 kids, age 1 through 12, um, we're hopefully publish this next year. Significantly better speech, feeding, and sleep at one week and one month follow-up visits. And we used the PSQ, y'all heard about, the pediatric sleep questionnaire. So I'll show you the results. Again, this is unpublished data, um, but I think I should want to. But um, so basically what we looked at is speech improvements. So this is the same thing from our form. We looked at the before and afterward. This is if they indicate improvement at one week or a month, they were in, uh, included on here. So problem indicated means they marked it. The, at baseline, these are ones that improved that marked it at baseline only. These are ones that improved, and even some that didn't mark it at baseline out of the 37. So, like for the first one, frustration with communication, 18 says a problem, 15 of those improved, and then 21 overall improved. So, it means six improved that they didn't even know their child was frustrated with communication before him. Um, speech delay, interestingly, we're not time to look at all of them, but speech delay, uh, 37 uh, out of 37, 16 of them had speech delay, eight of those improved. They would say that none improved. So like the black swan kind of thing, oh, speech delays never impacted. Well, here's eight that did. And actually, if you look, there's 13 that had speech delay improvements out of those. So it does. it's not every time. So it's obviously about half. So half the ones with speech delay improved, but still, um, that, that was good. I was excited about that. Um, baby talk improved, mumbling improved, getting words out improved. For feeding, um, Slow eating improved, uh, grazing throughout the day improved significantly, picky eating, choking or gagging in food improved significantly, spitting out food, um, all those improved. Uh, sleep, so sleeping weird positions, restless sleeping, sleeping deeper, <coughs> wet, uh, wetting the bed was not significant, it was almost significant. Um, wakes up tired, not refreshed, grinds teeth while sleeping, sleeps the mouth open, and snoring all highly significant, less than 0 .001. Uh, and then gasping for air, we didn't have enough probably uh, sleep apnea because it was 37, um, but still, eight of them out of 37 indicated they had um, gasping for air, and three of those got better. But then if you have 11, so that means uh, eight that were not in, uh, that did not realize their child was having trouble gasping, I guess, saw improvements too. Um, so the P actually, it's a questionnaire you talked about. So the way it's scored is, it's scored as a ratio, I guess, uh, of how many questions that are marked. So there's 22 questions on it. Um, so 7.5 out of 22, that would be a third of them. So of those, uh, if you score at above 0.33, then you're at a high risk for OSA. If you're below 0.33, you're at a low risk for OSA is the way the instrument works. After a proper tongue tie release, again, if you just clip halfway, it won't work. But if you release properly um, at our office, this, this method, it went from very high risk. So the baseline in our study was 0.48. So 10 and a half of uh, 22 questions, yes, was the baseline. At one week afterward, it went down to four questions. 
at one month went into three questions. So 0.48 and a 0.2, it says below the 0.33 threshold, and then a 0.14. And so sleep improvement was measurable, lasting, and they were also reported improved daytime symptoms too. Um, so that's a validated sleep questionnaire. Um, it's IRB approved, all that stuff. Uh, here's, uh -huh. in, in all of this, are you reporting on just the tongue tie release, or have these With children exercises. also had speech and myofunctional therapy? Yes, so lots of them had speech therapy at some point. Um, we did not, like they come from all over the state or other states. Um, and we only have one myofunctional therapist. So a lot of these were not working with the therapist directly. We gave them like standardized exercises to do um, that I can normally do. Thank you. So yes, but like ideally, yes, I've talked, there's two more slides. Ideally, yes, they work with therapists, but like in our area, kind of, we're not really the boonies, but like it's a little backward now, they as you know. Um, so we're doing the best we can. <laughs> if we're in California, we would have therapists for everyone. Okay, <laughs> anyway, uh, you were close you got. Um, so here's the graph showing that. <clears throat> so one month after, 89% had improved speech, 84% had improved solid feeding, 84% had improved sleep, 90% satisfaction, so they would do it again for their child. Um, so yeah, it was good. Um, but because of that, like, you know, the therapist, like, I think we would have seen much higher numbers. Obviously, if they had like a therapist working with them, um, and a lot of these kids were younger, too, a year or two old, like 18 months, two years old, and it's harder to do my with them. Um, you know, pre-cooperative, you would say, but I wouldn't wait on the two-year-olds until they can, until they're four or five to do therapy, um, it, because of the time element of development in the brain. Uh, so, uh, anyway, we had some good results, and 30 there is because this is at a month, and so we had seven drop off, of course. Um, it's so hard to contact these people, and like, get out, like, we can get here at 237 in that study, it's like, man, that's, that's really hard to get that many people, um, but, so here's how we do it. I'll show this twice. Um, so basically, uh, this kid's not asleep. Um, parents are holding hands. Um, it just disappears. Um, so this is a CO2 laser, no bleeding, no stitches, and I got bit at the end. Um, I wasn't using the tooth chair. Uh, normally we use a tooth chair. I'll show it again real fast. So, this is a friend of mine. His uh, dad's an orthodontist, but didn't know he had a tongue tie ball. So, it just disappears. And yeah, like I said, we, we get nipped like that all the time. It's okay. Because of 12 seconds. Um, so our exercises, we have them stretch the wound about three times a day. Um, so there's obviously, there's stretches and there's exercises. They're different things. Uh, stretches or lifts or whatever you want to call them. Um, basically, for these younger kids, uh, we recommend three times a day, minimum of two times a day, like morning and night, um, if they're really uncooperative. Uh, we'll send them home with like a malt mouth prop to get the child open if they have to. They can bite on the back of a toothbrush, bite on the back of a wooden spoon, but you gotta get in there somehow to separate the area or it will grow back together. Um, that's preferable to putting them under general anesthesia, increasing the cost $3,000 and the morbidity. We had a kid almost die from general anesthesia. Uh, it's a long story. The tongue tie actually saved his life. He got malignant hyperthermia, and very brief, uh, malignant hyperthermia, which can be life-threatening. The last child of children's 10 years ago died from it. Uh, our kid, we did the tongue tie first, we were doing the dental rehab, that's why he was asleep in the first place, we had to do like 10 crowns on him. Um, and so as I was putting the crowns on, they identified the malignant hyperthermia, in about one minute, 30 people rushed in with bags of ice to cool him down, it was crazy. Um, but anyway, I just stepped back and started praying, that's the thing you do at that point. Um, that's what we pray before every procedure we do, because you never know. Um, but uh, the kid ended up being okay, he lived, um, but he was in the pediatric ICU for five days, so. All that to say, general anesthesia is not without risks. I mean, that's super rare, but it happened to me. Um, so, anyway, so that's why we're not putting them to sleep. So I'd rather do this, <coughs> do the exercises and stretches rather than putting sleep through sleep uh, Obviously, for best results, work with my functional therapist, speech therapist, for an individualized plan, they're all different. And so we'd probably see better results if we did that. Um, but I encourage talking to them as much as possible, four times a day for exercises. And then one other key that we see is really at the week, the parents are not going to push hard enough. So like, make sure to lift it for them when they're in your office. You, you might get bit too, so make sure you have a way to get in there. Um, and if it's not reopened, it's going to grow back together and then it's not going to work. So that's the, that's one of the key takeaways. It's like, make sure to push back and make sure it's back how it was. Because then every day it's growing back together a little bit. If they're just lifting a little bit, um, sometimes I'll show like the example of like, and I can stretch, like, oh, I'm stretching. Like, you can look like you're stretching, but not do anything. Yeah. Like, now, like, I'm stretching, I can feel the burden. You don't want to, you want to feel that tension. If you don't, it's not going to grow right. And I got a few cases, because I know you're hungry. Um, but here's an eight-year-old, again, 
feeding issues, sleep issues, uh, issues as a baby, so if you can not diagnose, they were slightly tongue-tied, whatever that means, uh, told at birth. Um, but they said, oh, just leave it, but they still had reflux, milk dripping out of the mouth, and clicking noises. He falls asleep in class, they did a sleep study, they thought um, this eight-year-old had narcolepsy, it's a girl, um, headaches every afternoon, uh, and constipation again. And I look in there, that's the slight tongue tie there. Can y'all see the slight tongue tie here? Yeah, yeah. I, I catch black in our community. Like it's, um, you know, there's, a, there's a verse in the Bible that says a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown. Um, so I'm like, I was at a pediatrician meeting a few weeks ago, got tomatoes, uh, more like figurative than women, but uh, thrown at me. Um, yeah, like it was, they were not nice. Uh, so it's not nice to be here. Yeah. <laughs> people like understanding. The, 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 the. So here's the whip tie. He has, time. I, I can attest this man has been beat up yeah. more than anybody in the country. No, no, no. I'm sure other people. <laughs> I remember I was at a meeting uh, and they were just desiccated. Yeah, there's like a dental town. Dental town, Joy gets on there. I don't know, why you used to go up there? So, <laughs> why did you do they, that? They <laughs> like to beat her up on there too. It's like, I was trying to defend her defense and they beat me up and then they went. So. Verbal abuse is real. But, um, so, so to, again, to see gap closure here, you're gonna have to get all in there and get that out. Get the whole thing out, all the fascia, or else it won't work as well. It'll always form a string again, so it'll probably come back to here, but if we got it all out, it'll be more flexible. This same thing, you gotta get the whole thing. We didn't cut the genioglossus, but you gotta go down to the genioglossus and you gotta remove all that fascia. We just make a window of it. So what do you think happened? Well, appetite increased significantly used to be, um, sorry, hasn't spit anything out. This is an eight-year-old, she used to spit out things every day. I feel so rested, uh, haven't had any headaches all week. It was, used to be daily, less kicking, and we know that the headaches are because of improved sleep. Um, it's ways of less tired, less grinding, less snoring, less sitting with mouth open. Uh, another case, um, this is not isolated, here's a seven-year-old boy, and that's afterward. Again, we didn't put him to sleep for this, no sutures, no bleeding, it takes about 15, 20 seconds. Um, speech issues beforehand, uh, it's an interrupt his sleep, um, grinds his teeth, even after like 12 hours of sleeping, he still wakes up tired. Um, they had to homeschool him because of inattention issues. He can't eat stick, steak or chicken or meat, so there's the meat. Um, often they can eat chicken nuggets because that's like white bread. Uh, this is, um, but yeah, chicken, uh, grilled chicken, pork chops, steak, that stuff is much harder than eat. Uh, here's his PSQ, uh, I think he had like 13 yes marks on there. And this is afterward, so significantly better. On this one, everything's uh, good. These are good check marks, so the things that improved. These ones are things that are bad. So um, much better improved speech, feeding, and sleep. And here's the PSQ, there's the baseline. I think again, it was like a 13 yeses, and afterward, one. So it can make a big difference in sleep. Um, Four-year-old male, same thing. It's like Groundhog's Day, but again, this one, I looked in there, there's nothing there. But do y'all see the teeth? Like, why would they be rotated like that? They're being pulled by something. And so when you lift it up, you can see that's what it looks like. This is the same kid as here. So again, you look in there, is this speech kid, or something like that, you're like, oh, it's not a tongue tie, he's fine. Well, that's tight enough, and it's barely there. Sometimes there's like, the first case I showed, there's like nothing appreciable there at all. That's submucosal. We release the lip tattoo, and then afterward, uh, improved speech, improved sleep, and then, um, let's see. Uh, hasn't said his head hurts one time, no headaches, better sleep, she's been a lot better uh, with hyperactivity and attention. Uh, wasn't sleeping through the night at all. Um, now he's sleeping through the night. Uh, after the third night, he's still sleeping through the night. So, and four nights, now he's been dry. He was, used to be wet every night. He used to wet his, um, yeah, like pull up every night. So, that was 11 yes answers on this one, down to zero on the PSQ. These are kids that were in the study. Uh, I think it's the last one. So again, you can see just the difference here, like in the appearance. This is the same child, depending on how much tension you put on it. So again, like speech, feeding, sleep issues. Um, everyone's done, and they're still, I take 30 more minutes to eat. Uh, British accent, um, all kinds of issues there. So we released it. This one we sutured up. If they're cooperative with me, I'll suture it up. Then you don't have to do the deeper stretch of the week, so that's the main thing that improves. Uh, that's before. That's, you can see the fascia there. It's a nice picture of the fascia. That's what it looks like in there. 
So like there's a study by Mills with like Eo Parcel that one about the tongue tie and like they looked at dead babies and and then they dissected and said like oh it's fascia. It's like you don't have to dissect a dead baby. We can tell it's a fascia, it's not like a string. I mean they act like that's the one that quoted me saying Baxter thinks it's a string and Gehari thinks it's a sail. Uh, it's like he does not think it's a literal sailboat under the like anyway. Yeah, yeah. that article. Um, but yeah, there's there's fascia right there. So Anyway, you can see it right there. There's not like nerves right here. There is a nerve that runs like here-ish and here-ish, but we stay away from those. And then in the article too, they said like, don't use laser because it's like burns. This does not burn. A diode burns, but this does not burn. Uh -huh. So it's a difference. And not all lasers are the same. There's different lasers. There's different laser providers. I mean, um, we used the diode for two years and it, it worked, but again, with the CO2, it's less painful um, and it's much quicker. Less need for asthma inhaler. I think less tightness in the chest um, from the fascia is what I think for that one. Less congestion, breathing easier. Um, ate steak without cutting small bites. Too many new words to the list. I mean, there's uh, just lots of improvements. Uh, so takeaways, because I know we're over here. Proper assessment and evaluation is critical. Symptoms and function are more important than appearance. Screening should be conducted at well visits or uh, hygiene visits. Sooner the problems addressed and more team members, the better. Uh, again, our videos are on tongue-tight-al.com. The forms are there on the professionals tab. And then obviously the book is on Amazon. Thank you so much. Now let's go. Um, if anyone wants to ask Dr. Baxter a question, he'll be up here. Um, and I just want to say his uh, website is such a valuable resource. It's actually where I got a lot of parent education before we had our baby. Uh, released, but it was actually two years after the fact. Had I had that before, I would have had a much smoother experience. So, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thanks for listening. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I, uh, on the posterior tongue tie, you know, let's go back to that. I, I know if I see a little divot in the center in the blade of the tongue that there's probably and and the tongue can't elevate well mm -hmm. that there's probably a posterior tongue mm -hmm. but if i don't see the divot and they have all the symptoms and you have a provider that does it right it might be worth a try okay if nothing else if that therapy is not working or it's taking a long time it might so be if, if anyone has any um patients that can't say the ch sound or they're not elevating the blade of the tongue well. Do you suspect a posterior tongue tie? No, sounds like. Um, so we've sort of uh, changed a little bit our the way we address the posterior tongue tie. I think of it a little bit more as a bucket term. I mean, you live in my pediatric dentist, um, and work collaborating collaboratively in my office with an osteopath, uh, three IVCLCs, and RN, and my emotional therapy, but. We, what we do is, um, our ideal world is if you can't see it, even with all the symptoms, we try to sort of, I try to be a quarterback and get the patient to whichever provider seems to be the next right step. Like it might be an osteopath um, first, it might be myofunctional therapist, it might be both, both. it might be some high level laser therapy like Kinsler or Oil Lace, it might be a combination of things, but in our perfect world, we want to get function optimized and the frenum clearly visible before I make a decision to do a surgery. And we're finding with some of the newer things that we're doing that what was tongue-tie like, so to speak, with all the symptoms and so forth, that it didn't need a surgical intervention. But that's a small percentage, but it's encouraging. Um, and I primarily treat zero to two year olds, and my associates do the two plus year olds, and we suture everyone over two, um, but under two we don't suture. But I think that also helps with post operative. Similar case to what you're saying. It's she's more famous, famous than I am. No. She's the, the, New York York Times, books there. the New York Times. She had like a million views on people or whatever for the kid, non verbal kids that started talking, right? Yeah, she's yeah. 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 Anyway, that's cool. Good job. Anyone else? I just want to do if you want to see the study, you're going to put that on too. You really, again, want to talk about taking that detailed medical history. Because that a detailed medical history, because many of these children have, children have had traumatic births, 
and has had some sort of damage to the cranial nerves. So really looking into and considering that it may not necessarily be actually the tongue tie, but a mismatch of how the nerves are firing how they're in cranial. Right? So how important it is, again, to get that history. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. We have like no osteopaths in our area, like it in. They've all sold out and they're practicing. They're practicing like, not um, they're, they're practicing like normal medicine, like they'd be functional medicine, something like that, or like, anyway. Yeah, if anyone wants to watch the video, I'll shut up. Oh yeah, sure. This is crazy. I can't explain this. I'm gonna get the uh, sound here. Oh wow. Oh, you can just see oh my hand. god, Tongue position, jaw shift, cranial. Turn it up a little bit. Jump on the sound up. She said she's been in therapy, she's been talk, told to talk monotone like a robot. Like a, yeah. She has so many problems. Yeah, just watch this. Do you get the volume switch? Oh, it's all out. Uh, I was like, oh my, I did it for free for I was like, I don't know if it'll help or not, but I'll do this for free for you and we'll see if it works. Right, yeah. And, um, and so I am Yeah, I'll start over this one here. I have been through extensive um, speech um, therapy since I was about four. Um, I've been in um, Oh, in X, I've seen um, therapists at the homes, and I've gone through the um, on the tone where you speak really slow, and oh, I can't um I pronounce at and um, and so I am X. I'm excited um, to see what this can do and if it can help me in the future. Oh. And so you said some days are better than others? Mm -hmm. um, I, and I have a good and days, um, it comes out perfect. I feel as though I'm a little. I like every one else and it's I saw it three times, it's like this every time. Phone calls. I don't think it's just a stress from that. Days like today, I just really honestly, I don't want to talk to anyone and as I have to. Um, so I hope this helps. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. She's like the nicest person. So here's before. So I have to say the Pledge of Allegiance to something to, to test for the Pledge of Allegiance to the foe flag of the United States, the States of America, and to the Republic for which it's for which it's stands one in nation under God, indivisible, with the liberty and Justice for all. So we did the release. This is immediately after, like two minutes later. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's the laser helmet. Mm -hmm. We just did it. What? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. that so is unbelievable. But as a myofunctional therapist, you still have. Oh, yeah, but an asymmetry of her face. Her bike is totally incorrect. She has complete um, inability to control the movement of her jaw, which is coming forward and to the right. Mm -hmm. And you have four technical body postures. Oh, I've seen this. So yeah, oh, there's so many other things. Uh, mm -hmm. You probably need a cranial osteopath as well as <laughs> a myofunctional therapist. That was immediate. Oh, is yes. It? I mean, that's on the legal. It's unbelievable. And hers was close to your tongue tie. It was not obvious. What do you attribute to that? She can move her tongue better. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Please stay. We pray for us too. It's a prayer. Wow. All right. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you.